Good afternoon and welcome to, what is this, November uh, Second. 2nd. We're here to talk about real estate investing. Uh, today's topic, uh, what contract do you use to wholesale land? So it's Kelly Wednesdays and uh, she's actually here in studio. And so we're going to try to make this work. I need to do another in a favor for it. So, um, so um, with that being said, you know, you can uh, text the word Gator if you want to join the uh, live uh, to the number 205-964-5243. No, you don't have to get a line. And um, um, uh, while we're waiting for people to join us, uh, make sure you like, share, uh, follow and subscribe to the YouTube channel. Tap the little bell so you are alerted whenever we go live um, and when new content is uploaded to the channel. Um, the contract, well, the regular contract for houses, if you want to be able to access that for free, uh, the contract been used since 2003, been given away since 2008, text the word contract to that number, 205-964-5243. Instagram, TikTok, if you're wanting that number because you can't see it or whatever, it's, it's in the bio on both platforms. So um, also, um, the times, well, we won't worry about that. Um, oh, um if you want a playlist of videos and sorry to get you started in the right direction, <laughs> text the text the letters VIP. Yeah, today. yeah, text the letters VIP to the number um 205-964-5243. Yes, that it was there. It was that set there. Yeah, you put that back in. No, no, it's that it's that set. It's that Is set this in it? the right hand. Oh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. And so um I would, I would be a good one too. Hold on. Here we go. All right. So, VIP. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, so, VIP to the number. Boom, boom. You see it. Uh, also, the uh, video I uploaded on uh, Sunday. Um, it's a video to uh, give you a good idea on how to target infield lots. Uh, so, text the um, uh, VIP to the number. It's the second bit currently. It's the second video on the playlist. So text VIP to the number. Um, contract. Oh, I just did contract. So might as well give me the 50-50. All right. So you want to partner with us, follow the instructions in this video. Text 5050 to the number. 5050 to the number. Yeah, I have a this is on Instagram. Are houses that are being destroyed due to fire worth giving the time of day to wholesale? Oh, yes. Those should be, you know, some people do um, their entire way that they approach wholesaling is through burnout properties because they are able to create a whole system around it. So they are worth the time. Um, I would say you definitely want to build that relationship with, you can even build a relationship with like Surpro and different um, like fire restoration companies um, that service those and even some insurance agents that cover those type of like claims because they can give you, they can bring you deals. But, um, but yeah, you should definitely, um, uh, they could be a time of day because the thing about it is, is most of the time the insurance basically pays them the worth of their house. So they either going to rebuild or they're going to go build somewhere else or go buy somewhere else. So they almost would give the property away or they'll, they will not fight you as much on valuation <coughs> and, and price of the property. If you can get it under contract um, or can, you can get that, get that deal under contract. So definitely worth the time of day. Um, but you definitely want to make sure that 
you understand um, how to evaluate the rehab because in most burnout properties, you're going to have to replace um, like wood frame, um, shingles, electrical, plumbing, because it's going to have like soot and smoke and all that in it or burn completely up. So if it is something salvageable, just make sure that you do all your numbers to the best of your ability. Um, but yeah, those are some, can be some of the best deals with the better spreads. What about, have you ever did? I've done one before. I haven't been able to do a lot of them though. Yeah, I, I've, um, I've done a few over the years, uh, but it's been a, um, uh, mm, like the last one I did was in Montevallo. Um, it was in a subdivision, like a newly built subdivision and it burned down mm -hmm. or whatever. Well, it didn't burn all the way down, but it, it was salvageable. Mm -hmm. or whatever but it was in a newly built subdivision and you know it caught a fire and they let it sit there over a year and um i went back and forth with them because like you said they had got the money but um they finally you know came aboard or whatever and uh met this retired this retired flipper basically he had moved up from florida and he just needed something to do he thought he could just get away from it he said this is something i can you know work on for some months or whatever you know just to keep me busy but uh, yeah, so those can be opportunities. At the end of the day, still the numbers will work. Sometimes they have to be totally demolished because it's just not salvageable or whatever. So, um, and then now, now that depends. Does a new construction make sense in a, in a neighborhood? If it's a seventy thousand dollar neighborhood, then just with numbers right now, it's going to be hard to make that make sense or whatever. So, but you know, lots can still be valuable to somebody or whatever. If you can get it cheap enough, but. A lot of times they'll still be in La La Land, even though it's a barely a structure there and they've gotten their money to pay it off or whatever. And they are still trying to get, you know, like it was just needing renovations or whatever. So mm -hmm. they're going to bat on the motivation of the seller at the end of the day. So, but yeah, those can be opportunities. All right. Um, everyone on YouTube is saying hello. Everyone on YouTube and Facebook right. is saying hello. Good afternoon. Um, this one came from Jason Perez. He said, I'm using the five day free trial now. Um, when I look at the upper icons, it says that there are cash buyers. Are those supposed to be sellers or one or what am I supposed to do? Somebody in prop stream. I'm or is he so. talking about what do you know what program he's talking about? Is it freebie prop stream? Do you, is that What's like prop stream? He said he was looking at, or uh, did you later? Did, okay. Cash buyers. Yeah. Uh, well, you could do both in both, actually, in Bachelor Leagues or, or, uh, or, or do you later. But the video that I have out currently, uh, it's, it's done through uh, prop stream. If you text the uh, word buyers to the number 205-964-5243, and that video will show you. I don't think I got it. That might be. Yeah. Give me another day. Um, <laughs> a lot of words. Nah, yeah, boss, yeah. Boss? Um, I don't buyers. remember. Oh, there you go. Okay, yeah, buyers. Book. Boom. <laughs> yeah, other way. Other side. Other up. <laughs> okay. Um. Well, I don't think he needs buyers. He's asking, "What is he? He is something with seller never trial." Yeah. When he looks at the upper icons, and it says that there are cash buyers, I guess he's trying to figure out how to work the system. Yeah, those are just the buyers that have bought for cash properties yeah. that they bought for cash. So it, um, it might not always be an investor. Right. It may not have always been an investor. Um, the like, when I look at those, I look at, I like to look at the open up a property details and then see if there are any linked properties to it. If there are multiple linked properties, um, I would say that they probably are an investor. But if it's only like one or two properties, they may just be someone that's just they own their own properties and they just bought them cash. Yeah, they have a, a better option in PropStream is flippers. And what they do is they uh, use the data to uh, basically say, did this person pay with cash? In most cases, is it in an LLC? Not always. And did they put it back on the market within a year? I think that's the definition of a flipper. I'll look it up here in a second to tell you exactly what, it, what, it, what the definition is. And so now that's an opportunity to either reach out to them directly or, and or just reach out to the agent and see if you can make the connection through the agent. Okay. 
Um, this says, what's up, Flip and crew? A property was burned in a fire. This is kind of like what we just talked about. Um, it was burned in a fire and there's no foundation left. It will be demoed according to the owner. Could this land still be wholesaled? Mm -hmm. That'll be, that'll be at that point, it'd be a lot, right? So it'd be an infill lot because if they're going to take up all the, I would ask them, like, I don't know what type of foundation, if there's any type of um, like plumbing, like the sewer coming from the in ground, I would ask them to, when they're demoing it, try to cap off any sewer that's already coming up and not to demo that part because that can actually help uh, with the process. But if it can't, um, don't worry about it because, you know, especially you never know what the, the new house plan would be anyway to even know if that would make sense for the new the next builder. But um, but yeah, you'll just sell it as a lot at that point, like an infill lot. And so when you do that, um, a really quick down and dirty way is to take what the average sale price of the homes in that neighborhood are going for and um, times it by 0.13 and then times it again by 0.25. And then that would be what you would need to have it under contract for. All right. The, the definition of flippers, the way they have it here, is um, identifies a property that is currently for sale on MLS that was purchased within the last 24 months, i.e. a property being flipped. So. Okay. Uh, okay. Oh, I've got someone in the gator room, so I'm about to add her, yeah. Denise. Let's go. Hello. Hello. Hey, Denise. Oh, she's pretty. Thank you. <laughs> so I'm checking to see okay. if I can get a property comp today. Okay. Uh, yes, ma'am, you can. All right. Um, good. All right. All right, and um, uh, what's the uh, what's the address of the property? One eight zero four Oak Ridge Drive. One word: Oak Ridge, in Dayton, Ohio. Oak Ridge. Oh, you said one word. All right, so um, that's what we got here. Uh, just look at a little of the history on it. Um, a loan from years ago, 20 years ago to be exact, 20 plus years. All right, so there's some activity in here. All right, um, for those that hadn't seen this process, at least the way I go about it. Um, so you got a lot of activity here, which is good. That's close by the property within a half a mile is what is defaulted at. The distance does matter in most cases. Um, if an option, sometimes not an option. Um, so, um, ideally we're going to try to stay on this side of the street of, uh, what is that? South James H. Uh, what is that? McGee? I can't see it. Yeah. South H. McGee, just McGee if possible. And then we're going to try to stay uh, below Hoover Avenue and then above West 3rd Street. Um, with that being said, just to explain, the thicker white lines on the map, thicker white, uh, yellow lines, normally is the boundaries you want to try to stay in between, if possible. Sometimes you can see, when you're looking at everything overall, you can just notice that even if you cross those streets, you know, the prices really doesn't change. So if that's the case, then it's no big deal. Or whatever, but you still want to try to get the ones as closest to yours as possible. Okay, so um, so all of these will really be in play here. It's no big deal. It's not a really big price swing on any of this. So um, I wanted uh, in in this in this type of neighborhood here, all everything is under a hundred grand. In those type of neighborhoods, would you agree, Keller? They don't see the shift in the market like areas where the houses are more expensive. If you know what I mean, like you're not going to see the the huge like people trying to sell something for 400 and when it was, the market was just extremely hot they could get 50,000 over 
asking. You talking about like in these neighborhoods? Yeah, in these yeah. neighborhoods on a hundred grand. Yeah, you, yeah, you're not going to see that in those type of neighborhoods. So things are more consistent there in the Bronx on what's happening. <laughs> You know, they go normally they're just rental areas. And so and you know, people that love to, you know, buy those type of properties, it really won't matter. Okay, so uh, but I still like to go from most recent to um uh and well in this is way, well yeah, and I still like to go from most recent to um and then backwards or whatever. Okay. So we showed something that uh sold um 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 here uh, in october a couple of them one of them sold for 55 that well let me go but let me go back i'm sorry all right so first thing we want to look at is the year built the lot square footage the square footage of the house year built this is a 1924 build ideally if we can stand a 10-year range would be great not always an option the lot square footage if we can stay within a you know a couple thousand square feet it would be great. And, and as far as the uh, square footage of the house within a couple of hundred square feet, I think it's automatically defaulted at 15% plus or minus. Okay. So uh, we show one that sold for 55,000, another one sold for 62,000. So the one that sold for 62,000 is a 1905 build, which is okay. It's older and not newer. We prefer a lot newer uh, versus the other side of it. And then it's, the lot is a little smaller, and but the house is just a tad bit bigger, and uh, it sold for right around sixty-three thousand. Now we do show another one in September. It's a nineteen nineteen build, which is closer in year to ours. The lot is similar. The uh, the lot, the square footage of the house itself is smaller. Uh, it sold at seventy-one dollars a square a, a per square foot, uh, which yeah. Uh, let, let's look at the, let's look at a couple of these. I'm, I'm going to look at this one that sold for 60 to see if I can uh, get an idea what when it sold. So hopefully I'm assuming these photos on uh, Zillow are current from that sale. And yeah, they renovated that baby there. Yeah, not a bad job you know, for what's going on. Okay. Yeah, definitely made it an attractive rental. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, they did their thing in there. All right. And um, so that sold at 63000 Now, this other one that sold for seventy four. well, we'll just say seventy five. Let's see what they did on this one. No photos on that one. Uh, I hate that. Uh, all right, so I'm going to be more comfortable going with the one that we can see photos on that sold for 63. All right, because ours is a little new, newer, we'll bump it up to 65,000. It's in that range or whatever. Maybe even 70,000 since we do have this comp here. So we'll just say 70,000 to be safe. So what, what did you get it for? Uh, what what did, uh, do you, Are you already dealing with the owner or what's the situation? See there. Um, Denise. Yes, sir. Are you are? What's the situation? Are you dealing with the owner or what on it? Yes, sir. Yep, she's super motivated. Um, that old last you checked, and it's still online for Montgomery County. Uh, eighteen thousand in taxes. She really doesn't know uh what it's really worth. Uh, so I was trying to get some numbers together before I even considered an offer. Um, what, what condition is it in? Raggedy. <laughs> it needs a little bit of everything. Um, Raggedy. Yeah. All right. Um, so, um, wow. It sounds like uh, the, the best you're going to make with it being in that price range and what she owes in tax. You said eight. You said eight. You said 18,000. Um, yes, sir. Then. Um, you need it's just gonna have to be for the taxes and uh, maybe 20 I, I maybe 20 you know so she can walk away with a couple of bucks or whatever yes, uh how big is this house it's, all, it's not that big 1248 so does it show if she if she, if like if it was like sold at a tax or anything like that it still come up and in, in their name for the taxes, so I didn't know way of, of a way to see if it was still uh, yeah, legal. Well, I, I, 
I don't show anything here, but that, that's not hard to <coughs> figure out. You just call the county and they'll tell you. Um, I think was well, just Ohio. You'll be okay on that thing. Yeah, just call the county. They'll give you the status where it's current or if it's in a uh is in a tax delinquent uh status or whatever that is, you can find out there. And um, but um um but if you think she's motivated, um again, it can't be much over what's owed on the taxes. And then and and then hopefully they'll give you that amount so it you know you can be accurate on what they actually owe. And then from there, um, again, you say it's raggedy, and that can be, <laughs> that can go in a lot of different directions <laughs> um, <laughs> um, as far as repairs, but it's not that big of a house. Uh, right. So hopefully it's not that extensive of repairs. You know, it just, you know, it's just such an older house. You know, you never know what you can get into on that, on those or whatever, so. Yes, sir. Um, and I'm from South Carolina, so this will have to be a virtual thing. I, I can't, um, Drive oh, up okay. there. Think like that. Okay. All right. So, how, how did you come across the lead? She lives down here. I used to work with her, and oh. they, she, they, her, and all her family moved down here, and they were home about uh, a week, two weeks ago for a, a funeral. And she drove by, it and she knew I'm, you know, into this, into real estate, wholesaling, and and she called me back and said that, um, see if I could figure out what um, she would be able to get for it. And then I said, I wouldn't want, I wouldn't want to say, okay, I wish I would put it under contract for you for 20,000 and then I can't sell it. You know what I mean? Or I can't get anyone well, to buy no, it. No, you're better. You're better. Uh, but just, just do this though first. Um, so, um, what am I trying to say? Find out how, how to access it. But she may okay. not know. Say she drove by it. She may not even. You know, try to do anything. Do that first. Okay. Um, well, you can do either one of the first. Doesn't matter. You need to call the county, which is Montgomery County in Ohio. Yes. And and see what the tax situation is on it. Okay. That's the first thing you need to do. You you need to do that before you do anything. You know, because you don't okay. want to waste your time if it's not even. You know, find that out first. Okay. Right? So once you get that amount on it. And then, then you can go from there. If you if you text me, I'll I'll uh, I'll advise you on it more as you gather information on it. If you're okay with that, I sure am. Yes, sir. All right, cool. Go go ahead. I was gonna I'll say once you go in and you identify how much repairs, if it is anything more than the eighteen thousand, or if your number like once you do your evaluate your number and your ARB uh, minus repairs and your offer. Is anything um, less than eighteen thousand? Then what you will want to do is explain to her why it is that at that, and then explain once you go through the process and verifying that she does have eighteen thousand dollars in liens against it. Tell her that you will just because it is already um, the property is less than what the liens that was owed on it. That you would basically take on her liens. And so basically she wouldn't get any money in exchange for the property, but she, but you would take on her debt and you would, she would quit claim the property over to you. And then after you do that, you'll able, you'll be able to wholesale it for 5k when the person would know or whatever, whatever you want to put your wholesale fee on there. And the person would know that they have that 18,000 because technically the $18,000 in lien does not have to be paid until it actually, um, like the eighteen thousand dollars in liens, it can be transferred into the person. It, it goes with the property, right? So, if a person fixes it up and they want to um, actually have a pay that off once they rehab it, they can. But if you quit claim it, that means that the lien stay with the property. You assume the lien. No one has to pay it right now until it gets renovated and you um pay it on a retail sale. I hope that makes sense. Does it? Does that make sense? Kind of sort of yeah. I've, I've been listening for a while, so I've been writing notes and paying attention. So yeah, I understand the quick claim, and that the lien will go with the quick claim, and exactly. then the taxes will have to be um, resolved at the sale or the rental what? of the property. Yeah, right. Once the investor comes in and flips it, then that's when so no one would actually ever have to pay the liens until it was renovated and it sold to. Unless the investor is going to code it, right? But if he's going to flip it and sell it, no one would actually have to pay the liens until the 
So all you will be looking to do is get your wholesale money out of it. And but what she had, what she gets from it is she doesn't have to pay the eighteen thousand dollars, and she just um, quick claims the, de the the deed over to you got uh, to you, and then okay. you would then it'll it would technically be yours, or you can you can immediately quick claim it over to a buyer um, during that transfer if you don't want it to be yours, right? Because it's still like you will have a eighteen, you will be responsible for the eighteen thousand dollars because you own the property. Oh, I need to get rid of that as quick as possible. Then. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. I wouldn't, I wouldn't argue with it, with it, with that. But yes, you will be able. To, if you'll be able, to, like an uh, an experience, like an investor, that's that they will understand because they will be looking to, you know, they know that when they sell it, that um, they could just pay off the liens and, and deliver their end buyer with a clear title. Okay. Okay, I understand it. But that's your angle with her is that I will buy it with a clouded title, right? Because that, because that, those liens, those tax liens, technically would be the cloud title. So you, that will be your angle. Most people don't like to buy property with a clouded title. So you tell her you will buy it. Quick claim it to me. I'll buy it with a clouded, clouded, clouded title. Okay, and then wholesale it quick as possible. Yes, I prefer preferably before she like, as she's signing off that you basically are telling the new buyer, um, we would click claim this over to you for whatever your wholesale fee is. Okay, I would just have to find a buyer. Okay. Mm -hmm. And it's gonna have to be cheap though. Your wholesale fee probably have to be cheap because they got eighteen thousand dollars wrapped up plus wholesale fee. I mean plus rehab costs and all the other stuff. So cheap is better than zero. Is you know what? I, I, I'm look. What's what's half? Of, what, what did you text me the other day? What's what's half a zero? <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. So I'll get those numbers from Montgomery. The final tax um, amount and speak with her about the quick claim and then text in. How do you want me to um, title the text so you'll know it's me and what it's about? Just uh, just put Dayton, Ohio. I, I, I remember that. Okay. Thank y'all. Welcome. You are so welcome. Please join Thank us again. You. Yes, sir. All right. Uh, we got Nisi in the chat. Hi, Hi. Flip. Hi, Callie. How ladies? Hello. Hi. Hello. What's happening? Okay. Uh, still trying, still trying. So I need you to uh, comp a property for me, but um, I'm basically like Miss um, Denise, like the property is raggedy. I'm going to give you the address and you can pull it up on Zillow to see what it looks like. Um, she said she brought it from a bank. The address is 189 Helen Road. Covington, Georgia, 30016. Okay. Um, she I see said, it's a but go ahead. She said uh, she brought it from the bank. So all the questions I was asking her, she said it's... Um, she said it's a two bedroom, one bath, but on a uh, prop it's saying three bedroom. And then uh, she only wants thirty five thousand for it. But when I did the um, estimate repair, it comes to forty nine thousand nine hundred and twenty. So I'm kind of stuck. I told her I'll work some numbers and get back to her. You know, okay. but. Um, one thing that scares me on this one, just looking at the uh, recent MLS history. Um, well, well, hold on. Oh, it did stand for money. So, okay. Oh, okay. I see what she did. Okay. So, uh, she, um, so she purchased it um, from a, a bank, like she said, for $17,750. Um, $17, and All so... Right. It stayed on the market at that point for 147 days, right? Right. Um, mm. So, um, 
Oh, well. Um, okay, just diving in here, which is interesting. Um, huh. Okay, so I'm showing properties that have sold um, anywhere from 135, well, 55, and then, but everything else jumps to 135 to 190. Uh, right. But those are newer properties than hers. Uh, but they are right there together. I guess she was she was in the first phase of that wonderful subdivision. <laughs> um, hmm. Let's look at the one in eighty seven. So we have one in eighty seven that sold for one thirty five, and then we have one in September that sold for one ninety. That was a nineteen eighty seven. It's twelve years older, uh, being anyway. newer uh, than that one. So let's look at that property and see what condition it was in when it sold. Okay. Uh yeah. They uh is that a mobile home? Um they did their thing in there. Okay. A little uh -huh. bit, you know. Yeah. Okay. And you know what the standard everybody else doing. Um mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. All right, so wow, that that's a uh interesting comp right there. And it that's recent, you know, two months, you know, uh, it's 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 absorbed the uh, interest rates again. Uh, in a price range like that is not going to be affected that much anyway. You think, you know, getting close or whatever, I guess. But September we was in it, you know, yeah, <laughs> you know what I'm saying. So, uh, yeah. Uh, but but being that it's a little older. Um, but your lot is significantly bigger, 13, almost 14,000 square feet bigger, um, a quarter of a little over what a, a, a quarter. Yeah, it's um, 1240 square feet. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. now, I, was, I was talking about the, it's on a, it's on a, it's sitting on an acre where everything else is, uh, smaller than an acre. So, oh, okay. um, it's interesting that property stayed on the market that long. Um, I'm, am I missing something here? The, the mobile home that you showed? No, 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 hers. That she, she bought it from a bank. Yeah, it was. Um, it was one. It 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 uh, it was on the market according to this 147 days, you know, and she ended up buying it for um, seventeen seven fifty. Well, if she was buying it as an REO. It probably could have been, um, the banks on the bank end. I'm not sure. I'm just. But it, what, well, is she listed or did she? Was she? She bought it. Well, the the oh. initial listing price, according to this, was thirty three thousand. Okay. And then, yeah. but she ended up buying it at seventeen seven fifty. It was on the market one hundred forty seven days. Yeah. And but with those comps, that that should have jumped off the. You know what I'm saying? Seemed like, and that was back in April when they listed it. So you know, we wasn't here where we are now, but we wasn't where we were a year ago either. But it was still, you know what I'm saying? Um, I would, I would almost, I almost kind of feel like that was just. I don't think that they updated the status correctly. So okay. I, I bet she probably had it under contract because if you look and see, it says it says it was pending almost a day after it was first initially oh. listed, and then. Okay. Well, when did when did it close? Let's see. When did it close? It closed in the. September. It didn't close in the September. But so she could have had a contract on it, but in the in their MLS, the agent may not have marked it as pending. Okay. Um, which will which will close out the days on market. Yeah, the she, actual yeah, the, the actual sale date was the 13th of September. So she might have had a contract on it, but she just didn't update in the MLS as pending. Mm -hmm. And she just kept it as active listing. And then when it closed, she just closed it out, is what I'm thinking, because I'm just seeing how... how Why would it have took five months to close it? Because if it was an REO, it would have been that those... I mean, they, it, it's a lot of paperwork into, and especially if it's half the price of what they would have had to get that offer accepted. And that's mm. not a lot. That's not an easy process to get that offer accepted mm. from the bank. Okay. That's a long time. It's a very long time, especially <laughs> with it being like, yeah. it's a lot of, cash, a lot yeah. of people like the employment, you know, it's, it's, it's a long, it's a long process. All right. Um, so and what is she trying to sell it to you for? I'm sorry. Say it again. 
And and what and what is she trying to sell it to you for? Uh, uh, thirty five thousand. Oh, you mean what they have it listed for? Well, it's gotten a lot of activity. It's been on it's been on um, for sale by owner for fifteen days, and it's got sixteen hundred uh, views. So that's like a hundred views per day, seventy seven saves. That's a lot of activity. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's what I asked her. I was um last night. I was like, um, so what do you um want for it? She said thirty five thousand. I said, is that the best you can do? She was like, yes. Mm -hmm. She knows she gonna get it. Yeah. Yeah, she gonna she gonna she gonna get that. Yeah. Oh, whatever. It, it ain't no question about it. Um, she gonna get that if, I, it, if it don't get bid up. Um, yeah, I was just saying going back to that one forty seven. I I I'm almost I'm assuming, but I'm almost positive that. The agent just didn't update it. I'm pretty sure she had a offer on that property immediately, and they just closed it whenever it closed out. Um, because uh -huh. if you look at it, 147 days is almost exactly from that April to now. Mm -hmm. So I'm pretty sure she had a she had a contract on it, and she just had to get the the approval to, for the 17. But she'll get it. She'll get it. So I don't know if this is a deal. I mean, if it's a deal at 35, I mean, you kind of just give her what she's asking. Yeah, that was my thing. That's what I'm having a problem with the offer because when I did the uh, repair uh, estimate on the um, digilator, it comes out to 49920 uh, 49, because it's not livable. That's your offer price or is that the ARV? No, that's uh, the um, the repair estimate I did in the calculator or digilator for the repair estimate. So I don't even, I'm, I'm stuck. Like, I don't know what the ARV really is. Oh, no, I'm, I'm, we, we have one right here. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, we... Uh, <laughs> Come on, Flip, wake up. I'm trying to get I, this person. What I'm looking at here, this that 190 looks like a good comp, you know, and it's recent. So that's why I'm questioning why am I missing something here, why it hadn't sold um, at that 35. It's gotten a lot of activity. Um, looks like a deal to me. That's what, that's what I'm trying to say. Yeah. So um so that's what the um so what would my offer be to her? Um I would pay the thirty five. It's a deal at thirty five. I mean I just ran the numbers again. It's a deal at thirty five. Yeah. And she's not gonna okay. take anything less unless you can close maybe in seven days, but she's not taking anything less. She probably don't need it. She's probably not she just waited six months for it. She's probably not gonna take six months, uh take anything less. Right. She right, I understand that. So to my buyer and my fee, like what would I offer to the um buyer? Um considering well, they have to do all the work to fix it up. So let's just do this real quick, just you know, um just to show the uh calculator here. Um, so what what we what you said repairing one Kelly? It's 1240 square feet. Oh, I don't know. It's not livable. Uh is, is it? Um so 50 grand. I mean, I mean that's, that was still a deal. That's yeah, that, that's still a deal. Um, so let's do this. Yeah, that's the calculator I used to get that. So just round it up to fifty thousand, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, man, it, it seemed like it's, a, it's a, a really good deal, you know, like even if I did this at 60 percent, mm -hmm. um, it seemed like it's just a real, really good deal. Um, that's all I'm like, the question of why it's available and what, what, what's being missed here is it a serious foundation issue or something or what? Um, right. that, that running that um, uh, bill because even just trying to make 10 grand on it, you still good at 50, 54,000. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, um, yeah, is this it's listed on the MLS again? 
No, or is this for sale, sale only? Sale by owner, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah. I mean, you can go. Now, can... now, let me just say this, and I ain't think this through before we started this. Now, you do <laughs> know you just put this out there. I know, the right? I'm like, you got that. You, you know, it's, that it's really not good to do these when, <laughs> you know, they already advertised because the information is right here. You know what I'm All saying? Right. We can't control mm -hmm. who's watching or whatever. So, I mean, we get that many views, but hey, it's some, some um, might be a few gators out here. <laughs> You know, so um, with that being said, uh, yeah, you might want to get out, the, you know, get out this deal right here and reach out to her. See if you can lock it up. Okay, so what would my offer be to a buyer? I mean, to the seller? I mean, the to the buyer, buyer, I'm sorry. Oh, when you put it back out there, you know, I probably mm -hmm. wouldn't put it out there for less than 65. I can't 64, but 65, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. May 30. Okay. All right, I appreciate it. Uh, I got to go get her on the horn, you know, for somebody, you know, snatch it from me. Thank you so much, and I hope this is my first deal. I I'll right. let you know what happened. All right, make it happen, baby girl. Yes, All right, thank you. Uh -huh. All right. Um, we got one more. She's been waiting. She you know, she's sideways away from some reason. Uh, Don. I think it's frozen. I think Don is frozen. Frozen. Kick her out. Okay. Go ahead and tell them uh, or the topic. What? Yeah, the topic is topic time. Is it? Yeah, yes. really. Well, you go to me um, what what contract uh, do you use to wholesale land? What contract do you use to wholesale land? Um, okay, so, um, well, that's something else. I give it away. <laughs> you just can go to, uh, matter of fact, I'll just share my screen here. Uh, this is going to be a, you will find the shortest topic answer in ever, in ever. Yeah. <laughs> so what you'll do is go over here to, uh, just go to, uh, dealerlater.com. I think I got a code for for land. Let me see. Um, I'll look it up since then. But you go to deal, you can just simply go to dealerlater.com under agreement forms. If you're on your phone, uh, your smartphone, then it'll probably be in the top right hand corner of the three little bars. You select that and go to agreement forms, and then it says land sale agreement. Boom. There, there it is. Now, I have a video on it, too, on how to fill it out or whatever, but it's just filling in the blanks in reality. You guys are very smart out there, so you know how to fill in the blanks. So that's it. So now, for you all that don't know, I know everyone is not as technical as others. You do not try to print this page out. You must fill it out, right? You must fill it out. And down here at the bottom, it says, need a cash buyer for this deal? Select yes or no. Put in your email address, phone number. The next page, it says, generate, is going to allow you to download a filled out, professionally looking contract that you now can present. If you want to print it out, you still can print it out and give it to the seller. But O Tyrone tried to make it easy for you to get it signed electronically. Right. So once you have a download, now you can use one of the tools such as a DocuSign or eSign or any of those outfits to get it signed in a matter of clicks. Trust me, I am. Uh, I tried to allow you to live off my mistake. I mean, to prevent you from the mis I ain't going to say it's a mistake, but a better way of doing something versus but I want a contract in my hand. OK, caveman. OK. That's fine. But I'm just trying to uh, save you from some pain of getting questions asked to you that you may not know the answer or whatever. It's, it's a lot easier to do this when you're sitting at home in front of your laptop. You might can Google a, a definition of something and they'd answer that question versus, duh, you know, standing right in front of them. Now, sometimes that won't be an option. Some people don't, you know, they do want you to put them in their hands. But if my mom is on Facebook at 81 years old, can open email, finally can respond. Most people can. Nine out of 10 people will be comfortable with just doing it through a click of some buttons to sign something. Boom. So that's how you can access it. 
So as far as the, do I have a, a keyword for that where you can get it easier? Um, I have to look that up here really quick. Is that mud? Um, I don't think I have that activated anymore. Um, let me see. Um, yeah, you're right, Kelly. You're so smart. It's mud, I think. Let me see. Let me let me go to it first. <laughs> yeah, there it is. Boom. Uh, well, no. Uh, but it takes you to deal later. So yeah, that'll get you there. Just text uh, the word mud, M-U-D, to the number. M-U-D to the number, and that'll get you going. All right, you know what? I'm just going to change it. No, no, because this video will show you how to fill it out. Uh, no, that's the wrong video. Let me see. Uh, yeah, well, you're on the site, so I'll change the link so you can actually, um, it'll take you to the, the page where to, uh, fill out the contract. You know what? Now I'm going to leave this to where it is. That's because that's going to take you to the site and this video that you'll be able to see it. It ain't, it ain't available. Uh, so need, need the tool to find land owner. So yeah, so just, so you're on the site. All you have to do is just go up there to the top and select agreement forms and you can access uh the land agreement if you don't want to watch that video so it's there we're there m-u-d mud spelled the other way <laughs> so boom uh am i showing this on the screen oh let me let me do that let me do that while we're talking let me see um so yeah uh where is it uh right here so this is what you're going to see when you text mud and then up here at the top again if you're on your phone you're gonna it'll be in the top right hand corner the three little bars but that's how you'll access the land agreement by selecting land agreement and you can select, select the uh, regular agreement there too so boom mud all right i still have a bunch of questions i just um let's go Ooh, yeah, I had said do the topic in case she came back. Oh, okay. and I didn't know how long that would be. Um, this one says, "Hey Ty, if you if we are wholesaling a house that needs no repairs, do we still need to plug it into D letter, uh, into the D letter calculator with the seventy percent rule?" Yeah, just um, uh, you you instead of putting you just put one hundred there, or you can put one there if you want to. You got to put something in that field, or it's not going to work. So just put a hundred dollars there, just a hundred or you know, whatever. So to answer your question, if it needs no repairs, if that's the situation, because investors want to buy stuff at a discount, whether it needs repairs or it doesn't, it's just, you have to take in cons consideration what the renovation costs are, right? If there are no renovation costs, you still use the calculator. You just put in there a hundred bucks or whatever, or a thousand or whatever, so. Yeah, it's, it's interesting that you just said that because to, the, today I had a conversation with one of our um, buyers of buying a lot and he, he said even with it being, you know, move in ready, rent ready, turnkey ready, he still wants a discount. So it's just because of this market, they can find deals with a discount and they don't mind putting in the work or not. So they just they just want the deal at this point because this is the market to get some really good deals. All right. Um, this one came from M Star. They said, "Hello. Will buildable land normally move quicker than raw land? Um, when looking to wholesale, should I target both buildable and raw land?" Yes. Yes. Um, so on the raw land, I would I would even go deeper in your discount because when you go back to your owners of raw land, ask them, "Have you had a survey done? Have you had a civil engineer to go out?" And, and do either at least a desktop survey. Have you talked to the uh, city planner to, to say that it is buildable and what could we build? Most owners are going to say no, right? And that is how you, um, is, you consider that like your rehab talk where you having it with owners of houses that need repairs, right? Like have they talked to contractors? Have they gotten bids to know that that's exactly how much it's going to cost in the rehab? Same thing with raw land. Most people haven't gone through what we just, what I just described is called entitlements. So making sure that it's zoned for what you want to build on it. Do you, have you talked to the city to, to, to say that they're going to actually permit you to build what they want to build on it? 
Do you have surveys to identify if there's any gas lines or any other water lines or is there water that can be ran there or do you have to have a septic or a well? To, are you going to be able to get uh, utilities there? Like most people don't go through that process because it could take up to 69 months depending on the area that it happens in. That's why you need to discount raw land even deeper than buildable land. That's why we like infill lots. Infill lots, buildable lands, they usually already have water and sewer already there. They usually have utilities already um, to the point because there was a dwelling there before um, and it's already zoned and it's usually, you can easily get permitted for what you want to build on it because you're just usually going to put another single family home or the same of that structure back there. So definitely want to move because a lot of builders, especially in this market, they like to go ahead and be what they call shovel ready. Shovel ready, which is buildable infill lots, are um, a treat to builders because they don't have to go through that long process before they start their project. All right. Um, this one says, is there a cold calling service that you recommend? Oh, um, we got a card for that. VA? Dialer. Dialer. I saw that. Like Dylon. I saw that, yeah. <laughs> Dialer. Y'all don't remember a dialogue for making a band, do you? That's between y'all time. Making a band, dialogue. Yeah, he was one. Of, he was on the was rapper. He go, was he and, in the group that went to go get the cheesecake? Yeah, that was oh. yeah Chopper, and I forget mm -hmm. what the chick name was. Um, ba bam, you know, Chopper bam. got jammed up. I don't know. This is allegedly. He got jammed up. But he was. Hey, my boy, I don't know what he was doing. Was that the one that was abusing women? Uh, was a little a, a little broader. You know, like he was. Pimping. Oh, okay. You know what I'm okay. So, oh, yeah. 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 Uh, but text the word dialer to the number uh, 205 964. How do we get that? 205 964 5243. Dialon. It was terrible. All right. Okay. Dunn's back. Let's see. Who? Oh, um, did I text the stand? I can hear, I can hear but I can. Something going on with Don's. Her, should I say? Yeah, yeah. She sounds like she looks like she's in the car. That's usually. Yeah. Okay. Um. This one says, "Can I get an LLC for wholesaling in Illinois?" Can you can you get an LLC LLC for wholesaling in Illinois? You can get an LLC for whatever you want to get it for, but the state of Illinois requires you to have a real estate license to wholesale more uh, than one property in a year. If and if it now I don't know Illinois state law. I only know I'm more I'm more I'm more comfortable with Alabama. But I will say like so in Alabama anybody can have a real estate um, LLC, but you only can be a license like a to be a qualifying broker. So even if you had an LLC to wholesale real estate, you will probably need to have. Um, in your like management team or somewhere noted as associated with the company, a qualified broker that is licensed to wholesale real estate um, in your company. So, I mean, anybody can be the CEO of your company, but the person that actually uh, signs off on the deal has to be someone that's licensed. So just keep that in mind. All right. Um, this one says, what's the business that we can call to get the Flipman discount on bandit size? I've heard it in a few videos, but I can't remember the name. Um, if you'll just text me on it, I'll send it over to you. Okay. Let's see. Um, somebody was asking about where can they find the contract to put a house under. Just text the word contract to 205-964-5243. Um, this one says, hey, y'all, I have a home under contract and a buyer interested. He wants to see the property and the seller will be present. I told the seller they are a partner. What is the best way to approach this situation? Sounds like you got it just the way that I would have told you. Just saying that you and your partner are going to be going over and uh, walking the uh, property together. Um, buyers that are this is why wholesalers have a place. And, and uh, just remember this always is your flippers, investors cash. That's all they want to focus on. Some of them do a little bit of wholesaling, but they only want to focus on what, you know, their bread and butter, which will be flipping homes or buying and holding homes, um, which just sounds like it probably will be a flip. 
So they want to continue the relationship with you so you can keep bringing them good deals. So they're not going to, a good buyer um, is not going to um, do anything to mess up a deal. Um, like I've had buyers before that says, you know, that will basically say, hey, can you, I want to buy all your deals, but can we, can you cut me some slack on your wholesale fee? Can you always just only bring me deals and just mark it up 15K or whatever the case may be? And so I don't have to think, run through the numbers. I know that when you bring me one, is I'm good to go. Like some buyers, will, when you create that relationship, it'll happen. But I've, I've definitely taken buyers over when there's been sellers present and they ask questions. The buyer will ask them questions about the home. And then we step outside to discuss like the business part of it because they don't care what I have it under contract for as long as it's a good deal for them. All right. Um, this one says, hey, Flipman, I found a house in my neighborhood. It has an older and newer big sticker in the window. Uh, it's on Zillow and Realtor.com, uh, but not on the market. I'm new at all of this, but I have no idea how to get any more info on it. So it has a uh, an agent's uh, sticker on the window. Now, it could be just somebody just prospecting or whatever, but um, I did... What to explain the first quarter again? Um, he said I found a house in my neighborhood. It has a older and newer big sticker in the window. That sounds like a city. Yeah. Um, at the end of the day, you still just try to find out who owns it, right? And reach out to that individual. If if it just has some type of sticker there for some type of violation or warning or notice or whatever, that's one thing. But at the end of the day, you're still just gonna try to reach out to the owner. If you go back, if you do VIP, um, that video, even though it's talking about how to find land, uh, how to number one, find an infield vacant lot, but also, also find the owner, then skip trace the number. You can do the same thing as for houses. So go back and watch that video. Just text VIP to the number. That's V as in Victor, I as in intelligent, and P as in playlist. Um, 205-964-5243, I think it's under there. Yeah. The IP. All right. Um, what we all mean? Nobody from TikTok? No one from Instagram. Oh, I see done. I, I was trying to see what's it going to stay, but it's frozen now. Oh, she's in a bad area. Yeah, it was frozen. Um, yeah. All right. This person said, how many Bennett signs do I have to put out at least to get one call? That is an amazing question. It could be one, literally, um, to get one call. Um, I wouldn't bank on it. Um, they have to, it, it just, that's a hard question to answer. To get one call, one sign. I can't tell you how long it's going to take to get that one call, but ideally, if you're only trying to do it for real, um, you can start with 100, but I highly recommend 200. First, before you even spend a dime or even go any further, you want to scout your market to see if you can even get away with banner signs. And in most cases, and you might have to get outside your outside of your comfort zone, um, you need to see where other, other people are putting up signs. And that's normally where you're going to start also. Nothing prevents you from testing areas where they don't exist already. When I say test, five, 10, 15 signs, wait a week, see how many of those up, and then you compound if they're, most of those are still up or whatever. But ideally, you still want to go and, and uh, check out other parts of your market and then see where signs already exist if possible. If you already know that, then, you know, hey, it's time to, to dollar up and order some, you know. So ideally, to order, you know, I think the price of signs, you know, think I know the price of signs went up because of um, everything that's happened with shipping over the last several months or whatever, uh, like most products. And um, so the prices that went up, you know, so um, I can't even tell you what they're costing. Now, you don't want to just, even if you text a message and I send you over the referral, you just want to use that as a, what's the word? A, um, a shopping point. Like, okay, so they'll do this, they'll get them to me in this time. So now you want to go to the internet, order bandit signs and start calling companies. You know, you want to try to use the national brand. It's, it's rare a local company is going to beat these guys or whatever. Um, so 
Um, and then you just compare pricing and the time frame it's going to take you to get them. You can still check locally, but normally they don't they, they don't compete with the uh, national guys unless you just live in one of these cities where these guys operate. So, I, I just wanted to add, like, uh, you will get calls with bandit signs. That's not that's not sh that shouldn't be your worry. Is how is to get one is how many calls do you want? Because the bandit signs work as long as I was trying to look for one of you. Oh, there you go. As long as people can see them. Like the, it, most people only have about 10 seconds to read your sign. As long as they can take that number down and know that you buy houses or land in 10 seconds and they can snap a picture. Cause nowadays we just snap a picture. I say take your number down, but usually you just snap a picture with the phone. As long as they can do that at a, at the busiest intersection, it really depends on how many people you want calling you. Because if you go and do that every weekend at the busiest intersections, um, you're going to get calls for sure. I mean, it's, it's people that literally go out and look for bandit signs because they're looking for more deals and, and people that they can find um, wholesale houses off market properties from. Like some investors still do that to this day. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's not really a matter of when you get your first one. You can put out one, like you said, you can put out one bandit sign and get a call. Um, just make sure that you can read it, it's legible, and people know what you do. They're going to call you for sure. Keep doing it. Don't do it just one weekend. Like, do it every weekend that you possibly can. Okay, let's try to see if it'll work. Let's go. Let's go, Doug. Hello. Hi, finally. <laughs> can you yeah. hear me? See. Si. Yes. Gracias. Gracias. All right. Oh, so, I don't um, want no part of that now. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now, um, this is sort of like a brief consultation. I'm actually just getting started with this real estate stuff. I'm actually in the process of getting my real estate license. And I was really thinking, is it worth it? Because of the research that I've done on wholesaling. Um, I did have some questions because I did put together a list. Um, I don't know. The spirit told me you did do it, but I got a whole list of like multiple properties, um, commercial properties at the same time too, but they're not privately owned. Like most of them are, you know, from a, a, a realty or a corporation or whatnot. Uh, my question was um, getting started in this. I already have um, list RII, I guess it's stream proof. Um, on there. I think I was on there yesterday just doing some research as far as trying to figure out what type of list I could pull. Um, I think I already did go on fiber and kind of like find me somebody to pull me another list to as far as uh, ready cash buyers. Um, so I was going to uh, pull both of the lists and just kind of go start, you know, um, texting, cold calling and just emailing, communicating with the people or whatnot. And then just going from there as, you know, as what you teach and what, what much other, little, and what much other people teach on YouTube as well. So I was just going to do that. I was asking, uh, I guess, is that the right way to go about doing it? I do have a few LLCs or whatnot. Um, as far as I know, like, uh, it's a difference between doing it, you know, as a, a person and as a business or whatnot. Um, I guess my main question here is, is there any advice that you can give me as far as moving forward? That way I can kind of like nail this down. Okay. Um, on your first question um, about uh, having a license, uh, it can be very beneficial as long as you um, have the, the investor mindset first. And the license mm -hmm. is just a tool to, to create more opportunities or whatever. Mm -hmm. So, but you don't have to have it to start by no means um, to do it. Um, so you don't have to wait until you complete your license to start. Uh, you just okay. go ahead and get started and you know, continue to pursue, pursue your license. Um, and so um, as far as uh, establishing uh, uh, any type of entity, business entity, such as an LLC, um, if you already have stuff um, set up, that's fine. Um, I don't know what 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 else you have set up. So you know, I. Well, I was doing some research, and I know that with um, purchasing properties, it's the difference between putting them in your name and in your business name. And um, well, well, I would I would do I would uh, have something that's real estate related as far as 
your uh, LLC or whatever. I mean, whatever. So I whatever. should probably. So I should probably get my real estate license before I try to do anything with my business license with real estate. No, that's not that's not necessary. Okay. Uh, because you can literally do it in your name or whatever. We're talking about wholesaling here now. Um, so you can do it in your name, uh, but if you have the resources to go ahead and establish an LLC, uh, go ahead and do it. Now, again, you can, if you already have those established, you can do it in those also. I'm just saying I, I would just, uh, just keep a uniform or whatever and just go ahead and establish because it doesn't take anything. A couple of weeks, you, you have it, you know, at the most in most states, I would assume. Um, so I don't know if I'm asking your question or not, but no, you are. I mean, you're just basically talking, get my wheels turning here. Um, I guess my yeah, the, yeah, yeah. You could be trying to put all this stuff together and not doing anything. It's right, start. right. You know what I'm saying? Right, if you're right. comfortable with the, if you're comfortable with the process, start. Right, right. I'm definitely comfortable with the process. I've been, you know, in marketing for a very long time. Um, you know, I'm not afraid to get on the phone to call somebody. Definitely been in the call center, you know job market area but um i guess my my main thing here is like i'm located in arizona and scottsdale specifically i know this is a good market but the market is a little bit more higher here opposed to you know where i'm from like detroit or places like you know it might be a little bit cheaper or you know mid-range between here and detroit and atlanta but I know with being in Scottsdale specifically, um, the market is a bit higher here. So I guess my main question is how do I, uh, I guess, go about it the same way, right? Just uh, find the dealer or find the, the buyer or find the your seller. Check, and then buy it's going to be bigger. It, it doesn't matter. Let me right, ask you right. this question. Okay. What's, your, what's your goal? What, do you, what, is, what is the goal for you? Uh, as far as the real estate or as far as wholesaling? Wholesale, well, all of it, yeah. Because wholesaling I always see is the fundamentals is to get started. So what is your, what's your overall goal? Well, my overall goal here is to, um, I would like to have, you know, Don Marcier Realty, you know, one day. Um, and this is just a stepping stone getting there. I do have a cleaning business that I can incorporate in it as well. So that'll kind of alleviate me from, you know, having to find people. Because I know people already, you know, like, carpenters and you know construction workers and things like that so um that'll kind of eliminate me from some other things so I kind of got like you know half my foot in when it comes to being in this market but I guess I'm just fairly new when it comes to jumping out there and getting my feet wet you know as far as you know talking to the people getting experience with you know um, these properties or whatnot and things like that so so Don Mar Marseille Realty is this a is this a brokerage or is this a holding company for your your per, your own investment properties? It could be either or, you know, wherever the Lord leads it. <laughs> okay, I was just, I was just yeah. wanting to make sure because I I want to make sure what I what the type of um, what I would do in your shoes. So, um, I, you know, I, I I used to be like a person you don't need your license, but based on what you just told me, I would say that um, first plan to get your license but only what only at the point when you absolutely need them because I'll give you a timeline it's going to take you about a month to study for your and that's when you focus it's going to take you about well I'm about 40 hours in to a 90 hour course perfect so you already are in so you are already going so it's, okay I didn't know that so since you are already there go ahead because you only have once you get started and you and you do your um your pretest you only have about six months to take it but you don't ever want to take that time because you lose the information so right. since you are already in this process you go ahead and take your test but I, I want you to make sure that when you get your license that you already know how you're going to leverage them because you don't want to start paying all these fees and these dues and everything and it's not and you're not you know profiting from it um, right. So as you're doing that, sounds I heard commercial. Sounds like you have um, um, an interest in doing commercial real estate. Mm -hmm. I would focus only. I wouldn't even worry about cash buyers. I, I, I honestly wouldn't worry about cash buyers because when you have a good deal, buyers come to you. Um, I would pull a list for all the mom and pop um, commercial facilities, whether it's storage facilities mm -hmm. or warehouses. Or ser old service shops, like a lot of, think about all the things that are mom and pop, like all your mechanics are usually mom and pop. 
mm-hmm. lot of your storage facilities. Don't do any incorporate not anything that's corporation, maybe LLC and owner I and owner owned themselves. Only pull those lists in your Scottsdale area. Only work in your market for now and uh, pull all the commercial. If you want to hire someone, but I would say get used to your own process, um, but get a script down to talk to them about buying their commercial property and then have, you know, hire someone to maybe help you skip trades and maybe initially set up a, like a pre, what we call um, um, a pre-qualify the lead to make sure that they are looking to sell and you only speak to people that are actually uh, motivated to sell their commercial property. And obviously, as you're doing this, you want to be learning um, more about commercial um, real estate. I know Ty has stuff on storage facilities. I honestly would, if I were you, I would start with one type of commercial. I would start with storage facilities first. Okay, because I was going to go ahead. I was going to say, I would just start with it, start there first. Because you're you're just new to you again you're used to that and so you can when you're talking to the owners you already know the type of questions they're going to ask you and you already have the answers and again because you're already going to be doing this simultaneously to you getting your license but you start going to all your real estate events now all the um, look up w- what association is in your area so usually like in Huntsville it's a Huntsville um, association a real estate association Birmingham is the same way. So you want to look up those associations and try to go to all those events, go to all the broker events, and you tell them, hey, I'm looking to work with um, an agent because I, I, I'm an investor. I, I get storage facilities. I buy a lot of storage facilities, and I'm looking for agents that will help me be able to find, um, to help me list my properties. Do we lose her? Yeah. Thank you. Ow. All right, guys. Yeah, we <laughs> we um. We Can go- I say this one thing though? Yeah, go ahead. just just kind of what I was doing for the audience. Like when you start getting started, I feel like everyone like because we because Ty gives so much free game, um, on how uh, tax lien, storage facilities, homes, land. Like pick one when you're first starting out because you got to remember he's been doing this since he's since oh three so it's easy for him to go from different property type to different property type but when you're first starting out you pick one thing like I, if like someone that did burnout property i would until i made a certain amount of money i will only do houses that have been burnt out and that's all because you now you know every question that a, that a owner has when they have a burnout property and you don't have to go and try to find and learn how to wholesale a tax lien house. You know what I mean? So do that until you learn more. All right. Okie dokie. <laughs> uh, but we're, we've been rolling pretty hard here. So oh, we went uh, we yeah. Um, so um, you didn't get your question answered. Post supposed to be in the comment section of any video. We answer those on a daily basis. Um, I'm trying to say. Um, oh, Kelly, tell them I'm sorry. Yeah, so um, they have my Instagram. Um, I'm actually going to be hosting a workshop, so I'm glad that the last question was about someone that was aspiring to be a, an agent because I'm having a workshop for people that are aspiring to be. Um, it's, it's really a wholesaling workshop, but it's I'm going to cater it a lot to people that are aspiring to be a real estate agent or if you're looking to work more better with real estate agent at, um, as a wholesaler, um, this workshop would be for you. I'm going to basically clear up a lot of things about how wholesalers and, and agents work together when they're wholesaling a property. It's free. Boom. All right, so you see the QR code there, some new. Um, okay. <laughs> text me and I text you. <laughs> QR me and I QR you. Back. Um, anyway, so uh, yeah, so we got it in. So make sure you like and share this. Follow us on uh, TikTok, Instagram, YouTube. I'm sorry, Facebook, um, LinkedIn, Pinterest. I was say Twitter. Um, Anyway, so um, you see the QR code. You can message me through that if you want, if you know how to use that. Nothing else. We'll see you on the flip side tomorrow night at 8 p.m. for Flippin' Art 243.
text me and I'll text you back. Text me and I'll text you back. You text me and I'll text you back. You text me and I'll text you back. You text me and I'll text you back. Tick tock, you don't stop. I will help you make your paper stack. Where you at? Where you at? Where you at? Where you at now? Two one five nine six four five two four three nine. Yep, yep. Two one five.